Hello, this is Paula at Olivision Photography. This is a short tutorial about how to manipulate your logo. So if you have the videos um, software and you're trying to create a logo reveal, I'm seeing people who've got various problems. So I wanted to talk through that. This is, this is going to address making your logo display at the correct size in videos and also how to prepare your logo for videos. So I am, I've, I'm in Photoshop CC. It's about £10, $10 a month on subscription and it's the best way to get Photoshop. Um, so look into that at adobe.com if you think you need it. So I've gone to file, open and I'm here in my folder with my logos. I have various different versions of my logo pre-prepared for my website, large, small, print, etc. Um, I also have ones that are pre-prepared for videos. Um, so I'm going to take a, a high res, large JPEG. Here you see this one. Um, I'm going to take that JPEG because what you will have as a trader is you'll have a JPEG as your logo. And it's from that JPEG that we need to create our PNG file, which is what videos requires. Now, the first thing that I, I want to draw your attention to is this issue about whether the um, whether the logo is displaying the right size in videos when you view the video's finished product, because some people are finding that their logo is too small. The reason for that is space. Space here, you see around the top here of Danny's ears. Space here at the bottom. So the first thing we need to do to this logo is crop it. Um, so if I go into here, I don't want ratio. I just want delete crop preset, I think should do it. I'm going to try and go slowly on purpose for you. Um, because new crop preset, I don't, I don't want a crop preset. I don't know why it's asking me that. I just want to take these in. For some reason, it is not letting me. I'm just going to have a fiddle with it. I've done it. The answer was here, ratio clear, and then it will just let me um, it will just let me slide the sliders around. Um, so I'm going to bring bring in the edges of the of the of the crop box here and to as, as close as I can, really, and then hit enter and that will crop it. Now, the next stage is to take off this white background. So because I have a white background, it's not transparent. And I've just been chatting to Bradley in the videos group and he's got the opposite problem. He's got a black background. So when he inserts his logo into a logo reveal, um, you can see this black box around his logo against the black template that he's chosen and it doesn't look right. So so whatever colour your background is on your logo, ideally you need to take it off. And this is how you do it. It's actually a lot simpler, simpler than you might think. So can you see here we've got a teeny little icon and it looks like a a rubber with a pair of scissors next to it. It might not look like that on yours because when you're in Photoshop, all of these little icons have several icons below them. So um, you can just have it like this, you see, on the eraser tool. So if you've got that one showing, you just need to right click with your mouse to get to background eraser tool. Now you'll see uh, my cursor is too small. So what I want to do is bring my cursor up so that it's actually quite large. Um, so keep going. Aha. Now, it, it doesn't actually matter how large this cursor is. Um, what we need to do is you'll see that it's got a little cross in the center of it. Um, I've got the settings here, the limit discontiguous on the limit. And I've got a tolerance of 52%. Now, what should happen if I've got my settings correct is when I press down, this should become transparent. But I must click only on the white. So my setting has to be on the white. 
So I'm going to click, there you go, you see that. So I'm clicking and I'm holding down. Right, now look what happens. Can you see it's selecting only white pixels? And as I run everything, now I am holding down, I am not clicking. You can, you must hold it down only the once, right? So you're going to click on the white, hold it down on the white, and then run the circle over the entire logo backwards, forwards, several times. Make sure you've picked up every single bit of white. Now, obviously for Bradley, when he does this, he will have a black background. He will click this on the black background only and then sweep it backwards and forwards and remove all the black pixels. OK, so it's exactly the same. It doesn't matter what colour it's taking out, but it will only take out the first colour that you click on. Now, if I if I click here on Danny, the rabbit, um, that will start taking out the pixels that are the colour of, of the rabbit, and which I do not want. So so um, now I've done that. So what I need to do is I'm just going to click to the hand icon. This is purely so that I can't click on anything by accident. The hand just moves it around because if you start clicking around and you've got background eraser still switched on, you're going to find bits of logo and all sorts flying off the screen. Um, so so now I want to um, uh, save. Uh, I actually want to resize. Uh, so if I just go to image size, because I started with a very large um, JPEG, I'm going to ask it to do pixels. I'm going to I'm going to ask it to do. Uh, here we go. In pic, well, we've got pixels here. So videos wants your logo at around the 2000 pixels. So if I put 2000 in here for the width. Um, and then click OK. We've now got a resized uh, logo there. And then I'm going to click File and then Export. Now that I can export um, in various different ways. So I don't want to qu click Quick Export as JPEG because we don't want a JPEG. We want a PNG file because that transparent area that we've created on the background needs to retain its transparency. And it can only do that as a PNG file, not as a JPEG. OK, so here we are. We've got format JPEG. No, we don't want a JPEG. We want a PNG file. Transparency. Yes, we want to retain the transparency. Metadata, I'm going to keep my copyright and contact information. You don't need to worry about that at all. Um, colour space. And then export all. And it should possibly ask me here. Yes, you can see here save as type is coming up as PNG. So I'm going to click uh, logo. I'm just going to change its name to... Um, uh, transparent 2000 picks because once you've got all these different versions of your logo you need to be able to tell them apart so change its name save and there we go that's done it and it should be in my folder there somewhere um, so there you go. I hope that has helped. If you want to see what you're working on full size, um, so say if your logo is the wrong wrong size on your screen like it is now, if you just click, click Control Naught, it will actually expand your logo to fill the whole screen. So that's another little tip. So I hope that helps. Bye.